Hello, cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live like debt free, cashed up, and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. We are really glad to see you. If it's not, welcome back. It's good to see you again. Folks, my great grandparents lived through um, the Great Depression. My grandparents lived through the Great Depression, and my parents were children during the Great Depression. Now I'm living through the 21st century version of the Great Depression. We've just had a federal election here in Australia and the party that won power is focused on climate action. Great, I'm glad to hear it. But seriously, they are way behind, way, way behind. Our great-grandparents and our grandparents we're doing more for climate action and the environment 90 odd years ago than today's government will ever do. Now, they won't accept that. You might not accept that. But it's the truth. How did they do this? They wasted nothing. They made do. They repaired. They recycled. They repurposed. They didn't spend money they didn't have. They didn't spend money on anything unless it was the only way to get it, the absolutely only way to get it. They didn't waste their resources. So what did my great-grandma and my grandma do? They were pretty thrifty and they had skills. My mother and my mother-in-law had skills, more than we have, more than I have. I think that we might believe we are smarter than they were 90 years ago, 100 years ago. But really, I think we are about to see just how smart we really are with this crisis because practical living skills, the ones that my mum, my grandma, my great-grandma, my aunties, had or have, are just about gone. Anyway, our grandparents, our great-grandparents, did lots of things from habit without even realising that these were things that were saving them money, saving them time, saving them energy, saving our environment, our world, because they wasted nothing. They threw nothing away. Now, I know we joke about the big ball of string and the drawer of rubber bands, Seriously, have you priced a ball of string lately? $4.50 at my local $2 shop. And it didn't look really strong. I'm pretty sure if I gave it a good tug like that, I'd be able to break it. Fast forward to 2022 and thinking along those lines of, you know, what can we do? Hopefully that we can turn into habits to be more like great grandma. I started thinking about what we do here in the Armstrong house. Well, these are in no particular order either, guys, just as they pop into my head, but I saved the cereal bag liners. I know I've talked about this before. We don't eat a lot of bagged cereal, but those liners are gold. When we finish a box of cereal, the liner comes out, gets opened up, the seams tear really easily, and it gets washed and dried, and cut into squares and I use it as freezer go between for between sausages, between rissoles, between burgers, between meatballs. And I don't just use them once because when they come out of the freezer, they get washed, they get dried and I reuse them over and over and over until they fall apart. Now I also wash and dry foil and reuse it over and over until it falls apart. I know most of you do too. Veggie bags, you know the bags that the fruit and veg come in from the supermarket? Same treatment. They get washed and reused. I use them instead of cling wrap over plates and bowls in the fridge. Then they get, get washed and dried, put in the drawer so they can be used again. They last for ages. Ziploc bags. They're great in the freezer. 
And I've noticed there's some frozen veggies and some frozen fruits are starting to come in zippy bags. Yes, bonus. Now, when those bags have been emptied, I turn them inside out, I wash them, I dry them, I reuse them until they fall apart. Bread bags from bought bread um, are bin liners or rubbish bags or food covers or mini hot houses over seedlings. I know Wendy um, uses them as bin liners for her bathroom bins. When I open a vacuum sealed bag, I'm really careful to trim as closely as possible to the seam so that I can reuse that bag. It gets washed in hot soapy water and then I put it on the clothesline to dry in the sun or on the sink over a bottle so it will the air will circulate around it and dry it properly. And I reuse them until they're too small <laughs> to be sealed. I, I reuse the plastic bags from frozen veggies. They make great freezer bags. The plastic is designed for the freezer. So, you know, it's nice and thick. I have one of those little battery operated zippy things from the $2 shop to seal bags. It works. They get reused. Again, if I'm cutting it off, I cut it off really close to the, the seams so that I can use it again. I reuse my baking paper until it crumbles to nothing. It's, that stuff's expensive. It costs money. So don't toss it after one use. Wipe it over, dry it and reuse it. Don't throw it away until you get your money's worth from it. Takeaway containers. Now, I don't buy anything in takeaway containers, but Hannah does sometimes and she saves them for me. They have so many uses. I'm looking around. There was one here. No, nope, I've taken it. And they can be used over and over and over until they fall apart. Use them to store food in the fridge. To pack freezer meals. Hello, it's a takeaway food container. It's a food container. It's supposed to be holding food. It's what it was meant to do. Um, if you put them in the freezer, they're great for short-term storage. They're not so good for long term because they're not airtight, they're not moisture proof. But, you know, freezer meals that are in there for a couple of weeks, fine, just fine for that. And of course, they're the right size for portion control, aren't they? Uh, use them to take goodies to a picnic or a church lunch or to work. Use them to start seeds. You can put little cakes or slices on the lid and use the base as a crush proof cover to take it somewhere take it to a morning tea take it to cards take it you know, wherever another thing i save is bread tags you know, those are little square things that go on the bread they are really handy they are so very handy keeping them is worth it they're great little scrapers but for me they make the best emergency pegs, not even emergency pegs. I use them to hold things on the clothes horses rather than bringing in my pegs from outside. And I keep them for camping and they hold things on the rope clothesline when we're camping. Bread tags. We've even used them to repair a broken thong. One bread, bread tag lasts about a day. Um, another thing is if you have a pod coffee maker like the espresso or whatever, the pods are gold. Now you'll take the grounds out to add to the compost or the garden, of course, but the little pods themselves, brilliant for seed starting. Good size for little seeds. They, they usually stand on their own and they already have a hole in the bottom for drainage. So all you need to do is add some seed starting mix and plant the seeds. They can be used over and over and over too. Egg cartons are good for seed starters if you're not reusing them for eggs or to make fire lighters. So, you know, if you're not using them for eggs, there's another couple of um, uses for them. Milk bottles. 
milk bottles can become watering cans. They can be cut down to become planters. You can cut them down to make pooper scoopers. You can cut them down to make scoopers for your flour and oats and sugar canisters. If you wash them, dry them, fill them with clean water, you can store it as part of your water storage. Milk bottles are handy. Soft drink bottles make great cloches for seedlings in the garden or make a drip watering system. It's really simple. Cut the bottom of the bottle off, poke a few holes in the lid, put a little sand in the lid if you've got it, fill it with water and bury it next to your plants. Now putting the sand in the lid um, stops the water from draining too quickly. It has to filter through the sand to get into the soil. So even in the driest of summers, you can water your garden and not waste the water. Reuse the UHT boxes for seed planters or simply wash them out and refill them with water and freeze them for ice blocks or to build your water storage. Or you can refill them with cordial or juice and keep them in the fridge. Take it on a picnic. If it gets broken, it doesn't matter. Yogurt containers. I miss yogurt containers. They can be used for so many things, even storing moo yogurt. Go figure, you're reusing, reusing a container for its intended purpose. Um, they make great paint pots. They make great jelly pots. They make great um, soap moulds, all sorts of things for yogurt containers. Um, the paper bag that your flour comes in or that your sh um, sugar comes in and if you buy the big bags of bulk flour or sugar that is beautiful paper they are great bags carefully cut along the seam at the bottom or unpick the um, stitching if you can cut it up the side and then open it out wipe it down and let it dry that is the sturdiest brown paper and it is perfect for lining cake tins especially the cake tins for fruit cakes christmas cakes and other things that need long slow cooking it's so nice and strong don't just put it in the recycle bin it makes great um post packaging too even the outside with the printing just turn it inside out and wrap your parcel it's nice and sturdy. The paper is thick, so it's not going to tear easily. You can cut it to size and use it for draw liners. Use it for um, weed mat in the garden if you um, need, need to. There's so many ways to use those bags that would normally go in the recycle bin after one use. I save them. I have a bag of bags in my shed, but they get used. And the other thing, soap slivers. It's been on my radar a lot lately, but it's an old chestnut, but really soap slivers have so many uses. Use them as tailor's chalk for dressmaking and quilting to mark out your lines. Use it as soap. Just keep using it. Jam it onto the top of the next cake of soap i like to put it put the really small slivers into a pump bottle now this bottle's got a couple of marbles in the bottom when it's half full with soap top it up with not quite boiling water and shake it the soap dissolves doesn't take very long because the marbles will swish around and it makes a really good gel hand wash the marbles though are the secret because they keep it all mixed up. Sometimes, you know, if it looks like it's separating, just give it a shake, mix it all up again. And if you think it's too thick, add a little more cold water and give it a shake. Use all that soap. doesn't matter whether it's homemade soap or bought soap. It costs money, so you need to use it all. <sighs> so what else can be reused? And what else do we reuse? Tin cans. So, so many uses. Dough cutters. 
to make date loaves. Use them as planters. Wash them and dry them and then use them um, for storage. Um, you know, the plastic lids. You can get plastic lids that fit over the top of them from the $2 shop. They fit just fine. Then when the can gets too old and battered, then it can be recycled. When a paper bag comes into our house, I claim it straight away. I take it to the kitchen and I open it out flat and I wipe it out and I fold it up and it goes into the rack in the pantry for lining cake tins instead of baking paper or to package something up. Sometimes I might leave them whole to hold a lunch and if I do that, the bag usually comes back to be reused because everyone knows not to throw it away. There's so many things a paper bag can be used for. To write a note. I was tidying the linen cupboard last week. As I was putting things away, I give them a quick tidy. And the pile of old sheets and pillow slips is growing. So I was wondering... Um, what can you use old sheets for? Well, they can be cut down to make smaller sheets, single bed sheets or cot sheets or bassinet sheets. They can be cut down to make a tablecloth or a table runner or placemats or an apron. Or you can use them to make PJs. They will be so soft because the sheets have been washed and washed. But they can also be ripped up for bandages. They can be cut into squares and hemmed for hankies, cut cut them down and stitch two together to make tea towels. Uh, you can tear them and hem them for dusters, rip them into strips for plant ties. They can be used to make shirts and blouses, to make shorts. You can even use them to make undies and boxer shorts. A sheet, we think of it as a sheet and automatically think it has to go on the bed, but it's really just a huge piece of fabric. And it has all the uses of a piece of fabric. We just need to look at it as fabric and not a sheet so that we can see the possibilities. Old towels, they can be cut down to make bath mats. Old bath mats can be cut down to make hand towels and face washes. Old hand towels can be cut down to make face washes. Old face washes can go into the rag bag to be used as dusters or cleaning cloths. Lots of things to do with those before they really need to be disposed of. Now, those bakery clam shells, you know, the things that the biscuits and the cakes and the croissants and stuff come from, perfect for mini hothouses to start seeds. The croissant ones, brilliant. Or you can use them to sort cotton reels or store textures or papers all sorts of uses for those. In our house, a toilet paper tube or a paper towel tube, when we have it, is never thrown out. Everybody knows they have to, there's a box, they have to put them in. I use those to start lavender strikes and to start seeds sometimes. But they, they also make great fire lighters and they can be used to hold power cords neatly. They come Christmas time, we use them to make crackers. There's lots of uses for them and they're real uses. They're not just airy-fairy ideas, but they're good, they're practical, they're useful. They're things that we do every day. I'm also a bit of a, I was going to say, hoarder of glass jars and bottles and I suppose I am, especially these days, because most of them can be reused for canning, or for jams or pickles or chutney, even dry goods in your pantry. You can use them to make oil lamps and candles. They, they are valuable. They are, they are a good commodity. And even if you think you're not going to use them, perhaps keeping them to trade might be handy. Now, um, most of the time if they're commercial jars, the lids can be reused. And by commercial jars, I mean the like pasta sauce jars with the screw top, the screw lid. Now, the lids can be reused. But if you're not worried about if you're worried about that, then you can buy new lids for those jars online. Another thing that's useful to save are the squirt bottles, sauces, mayonnaise, honey. Use them to water pot plants, fertilise pot plants, 
fill it with miracle spray and use it um, in the bathroom to squirt under the rim of the toilet. Fill them with worm tea or compost tea to give your pants, uh, plants a feed. I'm getting a bit excited here. If you fill them with vinegar and sit them outside, they're handy to squirt weeds in the path as they come up. Well, that's just a few ideas of how to reuse, recycle, repurpose, get the most from a few of the common household items that we have every day. I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, oh, I do that. Oh, I could do this better. So if you have bright ideas, share them in the comments below so that we can all learn. Because right now, the more we can do for ourselves, the more we can reuse rather than buy, the better off we're going to be. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked our show, please give us a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you know someone who might like this show or who might benefit from knowing about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share link to let them know we won't harass them all they'll get is an invitation to view the show that's it have a great day everyone and i hope i see you all in the cheapskates club forum very very soon bye